Okay, so Amina, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you. To start with, uh, I want to thank the organizer for accepting my presentation. Today, I'm going to talk about a recent paper in collaboration with my colleagues, the ISWE effect in 4D GB gravity. Uh, okay, let's begin with the theoretical framework. The Lovelock theorem ensures that uh, for a gravitational theory, the Einstein-Hilbert action together with the cosmological constant term is a unique theory in four-dimensional space-time. But we know that in higher dimension, it's no longer unique. So, for example, we can introduce the uh, ghost bonnet action in higher dimension like this. Uh, where here G is the ghost one invariant that includes a uh, quadratic correction of curvature tensor. Um, variation of the ghost one uh, um, action with respect to the metric is this equation, uh, which is obviously zero in four, uh, four dimension if we put D equal four here. Uh, in other words, the ghost one invariant is a total derivative and doesn't alter the dynamics of the gravitational system. Uh, to solve this problem, 4DGB has been proposed by Glavin and Lean uh, in this paper uh, that they rescale the ghost one um, coupling parameter by, by this, so D minus 4 can cancel uh, this factor and we can have a four dimensional Einstein ghost one gravity. Uh, it's reported that this theory exhibits some inconsistency in nonlinear perturbations, um, perturbation limits, but it's uh, still uh, consistent in linear scalar modes. So um, we can use it without any problem in our work. Okay, after uh, describing um, theoretical framework briefly, let's look at its cosmology, first in homogeneous universe. Um, we adopted, the, um, uh, we applied homogeneous and flat space time into the universe's geometry, or we adopted the FLRW metric like this. Uh, here, tau is the conformal time, and we calculated the Ricci and um, Riemann uh, tensor and Ricci scalar. And finally, we obtained Friedman and Richard re equation for, for DGB. Uh, okay, but we can see galaxies when we look up into the sky. So we need some inhomogeneities in, in some smaller scales to explain these structures. For this purpose, we assume the perturbed metric like this, uh, which this is the background metric, and this is a small perturbation. And moreover, we need a line element of a space time that we use it, uh, we choose it uh, in the Newtonian gauge. Uh, okay, uh, if we, um, we uh, consider a small perturbation of the stress energy tensor like this and put it into the conservation of energy momentum tensor and a little calculation, uh, we can obtain uh, the Poisson equation of the 4D GB gravity. We need this file later. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so what is the ISW effect? As the CMB photons travel from the last scattering surface to us, they move through gravitational potentials. Um, the photon gains energy when it falls into a, a symmetric gravitational well, and it loses that energy when it climbs out the other side. So the blue shift and red shift can cancel each other. But we know that in the late time universe, uh, the gravitational potential will uh, evolve with time due to dark energy. So the blue shift and red shift cannot cancel each other. And we can see anisotropies. OK. Uh, this equation shows the temperature anisotropies uh, due to the ISW effect. We can read phi from the Poisson equation, and A here is the scale factor, and pho, uh, chi is the um, commoving distance between an object and us, and C is the uh, speed of uh, light. And we can introduce the ISW uh, autocorrelation angular power spectrum between temperature and temperature, and the ISW cross-correlation angular power spectrum between temperature and galaxies. Uh, where here P of K is the present-day power spectrum of matter fluctuation. 
Uh, okay, so the ISW is very important, yes, because the observation of late time ISW in the flat universe will provide insight into the uh, dark energy's evolution. Moreover, here uh, we have a um, weight function for galaxies, uh, so we need information from the growth of structure. Okay. Uh, in this paper, we used bias factor and redshift distribution function of three different surveys. Here you can see redshift distribution as a function, uh, as a redshift uh, of uh, NVSS, SDSS, and Dune uh, catalogs. Uh, okay, let's look at the results. Uh, this is the ISW auto power spectrum as a function of inverse angular uh, scale. The amplitude of the ISW autocorrelation uh, for, for DGB is significantly higher than the lambda CDM model. Uh, that indicates we probably need um, a smaller value for the dimensionless coupling parameter. And uh, these are the ISW cross power spectrum between temperature and gas. For, for three different surveys, Dune, NBSS, and SDSS, that the deviation from ISW auto by cross power spectrum. Excuse me, the ISW Mina, we are cross not, power spectrum between temperature and galaxies shows fewer deviation Maybe from. Your, your camera because we were not I'm listening. Uh, you can't hear me? Yes, now we can we can hear. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, Can you hear me? So, uh, I'm so, okay. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, to sum up, uh, we calculated uh, the ISW effect, um, the ISW cross power spectrum and auto power spectrum. The ISW cross power spectrum between temperature and galaxies shows fewer deviation from the standard model, but uh, the ISW auto power spectrum uh, shows a large deviation from the lambda CDM model. Uh, so um, it's in eight order of magnitude. So we probably need a smaller value of the dimensionless coupling parameter. Thank you. Okay. We have time for a couple of short questions. Martin. So it's a basic question, I'm not sure I understood. So um, the, the, these two models with the gauss bonnet term, they give a very different uh, um, value for the um, integrated Sassworth effect. But then you mentioned that you can tune some parameters so that it would be in agreement with the data? Uh, actually, we don't have a... Oh, I can't hear this. Actually, we don't have we a don't. very good... Uh, echo. I have it. Uh, actually, we don't have a good data. Uh, for example, we don't have any data for ISW auto power spectrum because uh, Planck can see anisotropies from ISW, SW, Sykes-Wolf, and uh, for example, Doppler effect. But we have some data for um, ISW cross power spectrum, but the data and error bars are very large, so they uh, cover all of them. Okay, if we have no more questions, we thank Mina again. Thank you.